Shalom, shalom, real motivation. Terrence McKinney back with a brand new video. This right here is a uh, part three of your true identity. And today's title is the best kept secret. And before we get into everything, the reason why it's called the best kept secret is whenever I'm, you know, exposing somebody on the truth or letting them know who they is and giving them background scriptures and everything else. A lot of times people always say the same thing like, how come everybody don't know this? Or how come you the only one who know this? Or how come my preacher ain't teaching me this? Or how come I'm just finding out all this? And, and them is all good questions, but the truth of the matter is, I mean, because it was designed that way by the most high, like, you know, I mean, it was, it was set up that we will be, you know, erased as, as a, and when I say we, I mean like Israelites that we will be erased out of remembrance. And it was, it was set up that way that we, we would be destroyed as a nation. And when you were utterly destroyed, that's what happened. And we, I got tons and tons of scriptures to back it up, and we finna go into it today because it, it, it is the best kept secret. It is one of the greatest mysteries out there ever. I mean, if you ever just was growing up, I mean, like when I was growing up, I used to see History Channel. I mean, I used to see, I used to watch different stuff on History Channel, and they would always talk about the uh, Lost Twelve Tribes of uh, uh, Israel. But back then, when I was growing up, I never thought. I was part of them lost to the tribes of Israel. I just was always watching. I always just wondered what, who really was those people and what really did happen to them and how could the people ever be, you know, lost. But once you start reading and reading and reading and you get the understanding and, and you see it, then you understand it. And then once you realize who you is, it just, it all come together. And like the other two videos was, I prefer, you know, you read along. So you get, you know, any Bible that you got, you know, 95% of all the Bibles got the same information in them. The word might be a little bit different or, or something else, or it might be this word, might be worded this different, or it might read a little different, but it's all got the same information to wherever Bible you got. You can follow along with me and... And, and keep up. Alright. Let's get it started. Alright. The first first place we're going is uh, Deuteronomy 31, 17, and 18. So this is Deuteronomy 31, 17 and 18. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befell them. So they might say in that day, Have not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely have my face in that day for all the evils which they which they shall have performed and they have turned to other gods. So the most high right there, you know, is telling us like, you know, I mean, we, we made him mad. You know what I'm saying? Because we was the covenant people. We was the ones who got the laws. We was the ones who got the statutes. We was the ones who got the cap, uh, commandments. We was the special people who he chose, like, and, and he chose us to be his people, to be a light, like, and, and that ain't no disrespect to nobody else, like, when he chose us to be the the priests and the ministers to other people, we were supposed to be living so righteous, and we were supposed to be living so right, we were supposed to be keeping the laws, we were supposed to be getting the blessings that when other nations seen us, and seen the way we was living, and seeing all the the great things we was doing and how, you know, we was ambassadors to peace and how, you know, everything that we touch prospered, that they'll want to come along. 
like there are other nations that see us and they'll be like, dang man, like them Israelites, they doing their thing, man. This has gotta be because of their God, like the way they live, the way they govern themselves, the way they look after each other, like let's let's go let's go find out to them, you know. The way we was living was supposed to bring all the nations to the most high. Like and we were supposed to be an example. We were supposed to be a light. We were supposed to be the ones, you know, giving the word, you know, to these other people. And we weren't doing that. I mean, from the beginning, we always, it, it, it'll tell you, like, we were stiff that people, and we always <clears throat> did the opposite. And he say, you know, he gonna hide our face from us, and he gonna hide his face from them. And he said, we, we would devour, and many evils and troubles shall befell them. And, and that's exactly what happened over and over and over and over, like, uh, many evils and many troubles uh, uh happen to us i mean we i mean so much stuff happened to us as 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 a as a a nation that is, is crazy i mean and i ain't talking about the the 400 years of captivity here i mean once you start doing a history and you start learning you know uh everything that happened to us and all the times that we was in captivity and all the times we got conquered, all the times that our cities got slaughtered, plundered, you know, and it, it, it go back, it, it happened over, 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 and over and over. So, like, this captivity that we in now might be, be, the, be the greatest captivity because there was so much stuff happening to it. But it's not the first captivity and it ain't the first, you know, persecution as we had as a, as a people. And like you just got to do your history, like you know, like like I said, like this is so-called Black History Month, but they only teach you, you know, four hundred years of what happened in America. And when you really do the history, you'll find out like it, it's so much stuff happened. And and like in eighteen, he said, "I will surely have my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have performed, in that they turn to other gods." I mean, and. That's still to this to this day, you know. I mean, when you, you know, uh, praying the images, you know, bow down to crosses, uh, bowing down to cobblestones, and you know, you got your rosary on, you know, you praying to the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus, all of this other gods, you know. I keep telling y'all, uh, the most eyes, uh, you know. A, a image image list God like you know we pray to him and not to no form all right let's keep it moving next let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 32 26 Deuteronomy 32 26 and this is a real short line but this is just like so much on point that it, it's crazy and it said, I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. And this, let me read that again. I said, I will scatter them into corners and I will make the remembrance of them cease from among men. That's exactly what happened. Because don't nobody remember, you know, well, people, well, they don't act like they remember uh, who the, the, the real Israelites was or what color the Hebrews was no matter how much pictures you show them no matter what you tell them or I mean when they see the hieroglyphics when they find the old pictures and everything else like no nobody want to give credit to to the who the real Israel's like is even you know we don't even we have the time when you tell you know, when you're trying to tell somebody who they is, they don't even want to believe it. They, they what? Me? Like, you know what I'm saying? They think it's it's unbelievable. They think, like, nah, ain't no way possible that they can be the same people that's, you know, uh, related to the people who wrote this book. When you tell them, they, they look at you like you crazy. Like, you done bumped your head or you done did something. Like, so that's exactly what happened. So our, our remembrance, you know, disappeared. Now, when you think uh, Israelites, you think of uh, the people that's over there in Israel, and they ain't Israelites, you know. They Jewish. Look up the word ish. The word ish means, like, to to pertain to, to be something like. Like, 
when you see a girl and she acting like a boy, you be like, why oh, she acting boyish? But she ain't a boy. She just acting like a boy. And ain't no disrespect to them either, but that's just the, the truth the truth about it. Jewish to them is, you know, a religion, you know, and we didn't consider ourselves Jews. We was Yehudins, like, and I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a get back to them later in the video, but for right now, let's keep it moving. All right, next we're going to turn to Psalm 83. As, as my shirt say, Psalm 83. The Psalm 83 say a lot in it itself when you read it. And I ain't going to read all of Psalm 83. I'm just going to read Psalm 83. Uh, 1 through 12. And this is a, a, a psalm. Psalm is like basically, it was like a book of songs. To say, keep not your silence, O God. Hold not your peace and be not still, O God. For lo, your enemies make atonement. And they that hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty account, counsel against your people. And consulted against your hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted, consulted together with one consent. They are the confederate against you. The tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites of Moab, and the Harganines, Gebel, and Ammoni, and Amalek. The Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot, shall I? Do unto them as the as to the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabinah, at the brook of Kishon, which perishes the indoor. They became as dung from the earth. Make their nobles like Oro and like Z, yes all the princes of Zaba and as of Zamuna. Who said, let us take unto ourselves the houses of God in possession. I'm just going to stop right there because there's so much packed in there that is ridiculous. You know, and and everything that is, that's in the psalm not happen, you know. Uh, it say, like in two it say, for lo, your enemies have made it time out. And they that hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted against your hidden ones. I mean, that's 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 basically what happened. You know, everybody came against us. You know, when you think of the, uh, the slave trade, everybody had their hands in them inside the slave trade. Everybody. It wasn't just one race. You know, we everybody. You know, from the Arabs to the Europeans to the Africans, everybody had they, they, they part in the slave trade. And we was we was the only ones who, who suffered from that. And and we the hidden ones because we, we still had because a lot of us still don't know who we is. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation and the name of Israel may no, be no more in remembrance. And, and that's just what happened. You know, we ain't, we no longer a nation. And don't nobody, again, like I said, don't nobody remember who we is. Like, you know, when you ask us who we is, we, we say African-American, two continents. Again, that's, that's not how anybody else in the world relates to themselves. You know, if they tell you to go back to your country, where are you going? You going to Africa or you going to America? You know, they tell you, I mean, it goes back to the country your ancestors came from. You can't even name that place in Africa. Uh, you 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 would start being you know you would start questioning yourself where 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 did my people come from because we don't know that because they have consulted together with one consent they are confederate against you and that's true they they consulted with one consent you know everybody everybody had their hands in it the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites I'm just gonna stop right there because when them is the exact two countries that's over there right now 
and Israel going to war with each other. The Tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Them the ones that's going to war right now and fighting over, you know, our, our holy land over there. And, and it's crazy because the more you read the Bible and the more you read the Bible and if they was the, the true people once, the the uh, the true people get back in the land, it's supposed to be peace throughout earth. And it'll tell you that the true people ain't going to get back into the land until the Messiah come back. So that's how when you, when the more you read, the more you understand. And you understand that they can't be the true people over there if they still going to war. You know, when the true people was over there going to war, all we had to do was pray to the Most High. You know what I'm saying? To live righteously and he'll fight our battles for us. And that's how you can, when you, when the more you break down it and the more you read that you know that them can't be the true people because they, they, they've been going to war nonstop, dropping bombs on each other, you know what I'm saying, for, for forever. And, and it ain't going to stop. I don't think it's going to stop until, and, and, until the Messiah come back. That's the only time that land going to have some rest is when, when the Messiah come back and he take over everything. But that's how you know. Those two, those two, Edom and the Ishmaelites is over there now. And we're going to keep it moving. All right, now let's go to Isaiah 1. And it's, it's a lot of stuff on Isaiah. Uh, a lot of stuff about how we hid it. And we don't know, you know. And, and right now I'm going to read. I'm going to read 2 to 9 because it's just so lot. Like I was going to skip around it and go, you know, punch into where the, like the main things. But it wouldn't do the, the passage justice unless I read it from, you know, from 2 to 9. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For Yahweh has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. And they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner. And the donkey his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. A sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. For they have forsaken Yahweh. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They are gone away backward. Why would you be stricken any more? You will revolt me more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. For the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither sued with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land strangers devour in your presence. And it is desolate, as overgrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Unless Yahweh of hosts have left unto us a very small remnant, we shall have been in Sodom, and we shall have been like unto Gomorrah. And that's deep, like, you know. I mean, verse 3, say the ox knows his owner and the donkey his master's crib, but Israel do not know. My people do not consider. What he's saying right there is, you know, I mean, a bull know who own it. You know, a donkey know, you know, where his house is, you know, or know who his, his master is. But but we as a people, we, we don't know who our God is and, and we, we don't follow him. Like, you know, and it's, and it's crazy because he picked us. And we don't know it. And we don't know who we is. We just, we lost. And it said, in four, a sinful nation, a people laden with an iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. Like, say, we just a people, that's all we do, you know, a sin. And when, when you see most of the nations, most of us think of, think of us that way. Most of us think of us like we just, like, Bad, like they that's I mean, we got the worst reputation out of there, out of here. I was even watching something that I mean, I don't agree with, but like how people think about us, you know. Uh, I was watching something on uh, 
it was on World Star. It was a, somebody was interviewing Joe Rogan was interviewing some guy, and the guy was saying that African Americans have a gene in them that cause them to be more violent and everything else. So that's why the violence is so high among them in their own community. I mean, it's hogwash and everything. There's this whole debate about the MAOA gene, which is like this gene that um, black America, you know, black, uh, you know, Africans have like much. It's like a proclivity to violence that they have. MAOA gene. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I, you know, I recommend people Google it and do their own research. It's like a big debate about whether or not. But basically, like what it is, is it's, you know, if we if you think about like, you know, kind of white European Asian ancestors as we kind of moved out of Africa like aggression and violence was kind of less necessary because we were like farmers and stuff. But right? God, is that really true? It's just the perception that we get from other people. Like, and, and when I was looking at it, I'm like, you know, I'm, it, it's just crazy. A seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken Yahuwah. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They have gone away backwards. I mean, because we don't live by this book. We don't live by the statutes, laws, and commandments. Uh, I'm going to skip down to uh, 7. Say the country is desolate. The cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour in your presence. And, and that's right now. I mean, you can't even go over there. And the ones that we do got over there in the little small town of Demona, they trying to deport half of them. You know, they got like a... a, a Maybe like 3,000 Hebrew Israelites who went back and tried to establish, you know, uh, a little town, a little sanctuary, you know, in the homeland. And every time you know, you see on the news, and you know, they ain't doing nothing over there but living peacefully. But every time you see on the news, they trying to kick them out. They, they, they giving them, you know, 60 days to get out. They giving them this much of time to leave and this much time to leave. And they ain't doing nothing but living over there peacefully. They won't let them join nothing. They won't let them be in. The one I was watching an interview, the one guy said he wanted to be a, a pilot. You know, the young black Hebrew Israelite brother. And he said the teacher told him he'll never be a pilot in Israel, which was crazy. You know, and so the ones that we do got over there, they don't even want them over there or not. They don't even want them over there or not. It's, I mean, at all. And it is desolate. It's over, overthrown by strangers. Them is strangers in that land because they wasn't, you know, born in that land. And that's our land. And now, unless Yahweh of hosts have left unto us a very small remnant. A lot of people don't understand that. Mean, that means that a lot of us ain't going to wake up. Like, you know, it's always been a very small remnant. A remnant means how many people going to remember and wake up and be you know, realize who they is and where they came from. A lot of us ain't going to get it. You know, um, I gave up really trying to, you know, I mean, convince people more than three or four times. Like, I, sometimes I talk to people, some some people seem interested in it, and then they fade away. But then you can talk to one person, and it stick to them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and they get it right away, or they, they get curious and they want to find out more and more and more and more and more and that's the people that's going to be a part of the remedy that's what i just came to the conclusion a lot of times i'll be telling people i run into them and i keep trying to tell them stuff i keep trying to tell them stuff and they continue to just look at me like i'm crazy like and so i can't you know i, I get it like you know i can't i can't you know save everybody so i just keep it moving Okay, y'all, I want everybody uh, to turn to Isaiah 6.10. And we're just going to keep breaking it down. Like, it's, it's so many scriptures in here like that. It ain't no way impossible that I can get through all the scriptures, especially trying to keep the video to like 35 to 40 minutes where it's, it's designed for half of us not to know who we is and for us to be forgotten as a nation. It was... It was the most I will for us, you know, transgressing against his thoughts. But Isaiah 16, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. <laughs> Let me read that again. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy. And shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, 
and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Like, that's just saying, you ain't gonna understand. You ain't gonna know what's going on unless you know you convert your heart and be healed. Like, if you really seek after his word, like, you ain't gonna know who you is. You ain't gonna understand what's going on. You ain't gonna know none of it. Or unless you get into this book and, and, and you search him out and you really start trying to live the laws. You, you put away the pagan holidays. You put away the pork. You put away the lobster. You put away the shrimp. You really start trying to keep the commandments. Then it's gonna all make sense to you. But until you do any of that, you ain't gonna know who you is. You gonna think you just a a a, a, a black person, a, a colored person, a, a Negro, a, a nigga. You gonna think you just somebody from you know off the coast of Africa or wherever you think you came from. Like you ain't gonna understand it, and you ain't gonna get it. Like regardless of how much somebody preaches to you how much somebody tell it to you, how much documentaries you watch on YouTube, or how much you stand on the corner and listen to these these brothers on the corners. If you ain't searching out the word and you ain't trying to get an understanding, then you ain't gonna never get it. And that's just all to it. Like, it, 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 because it's set up in the design that way. All right, let's, let's go to Isaiah 9 and 17. And we got like two more places in Isaiah. Nah, we're gonna we gonna skip Isaiah nine and seventeen. That's that's more a different video right there. Uh -uh, that's my bad. Let's go to uh Isaiah forty two nineteen through twenty two. And and this is another real deep passage right here. Like deep, like because it it, it, it showed like so much of where we at right now that it, it, it's crazy. It, it's it's so relatable to our current circumstances, man. Let's say our right, nineteen. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and as blind as Yahweh's servant, seeing many things but you observe not, opening the ears. But he hears not. Yahweh's will please for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hidden in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivers. For a spoil and none says restore. That's just deep. He said, who was blind but my servant or deaf as the messenger that I sent? And that's us. I mean, because we can't see nothing that's going on. Like, and when somebody try to give us, give us, you know, uh, the word on on, the, on who he is and what we should be doing, we don't listen to it. We don't care about it. It go in one ear and out the other. And some of us, some of us even take the fact that we the people of the book, but it, it don't change nothing in our life. It don't make us convert nothing in our life. We just take it and then we get proud and we get boastful and, and then we feel like we superior to other people, but it don't it don't have no impact on our daily life. It don't help us change. It don't it don't make us wanna, you know, honor the Shabbat, you know. I mean, it don't make us wanna follow the laws or follow the commandments. It just give us a swelling of the head. And 20, it says, seeing many things, but you observe not, opening the ears and he hear not. And that's, that's the same thing. Like, like what I'm saying, like a lot of, a lot of people going to listen to this video, but they ain't going to understand it and they ain't going to get nothing. They're going to, they're going to sit to it, sit to it for 35 minutes and they're going to listen and they're going to listen and they're going to listen. But then once they get, they stop listening, then they're going to be at being off 
doing whatever they was doing before they, the video popped up in the recommended feed. And, and that's crazy. 22. But this is that people rob and spoil. They are all of them snaring the holes and they are hidden in prison houses. That's deep. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think it's no more, especially when you look at this country period. We got almost 3 million people in prison. We probably got more prison people in prison in the United States than probably all the prisons combined across the world. You know, I was watching a documentary on Netflix and it was just showing the numbers and numbers that like every 10 years, uh, how the, the prison numbers jumped up from 10 years to 10 years, you know? And it seemed like when a crack epidemic came out and the drug game start came out, it was just a reason for them to put us in jails. And we went from like, you know, like 200,000 to, to 600,000 to 800,000 to 1.2 million to 2.2 million. Now we almost had 3 million people in jail. Like 3 million people in jail. That's a lot of, and, and I'm just saying, I'm just thinking about black males. That's a lot of black males in jail in this country. That's crazy. Like we hid in prison houses. Like it don't get no, when, when you think of prison, who you think about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You think about us, you know? This is the people robbed and spoiled. They are all snaring a hole, snaring the holes, and we all in trouble wherever you go. Like, you know, it's somebody that's in trouble. It's somebody that needs some help. We the we the only ones. Like, that's it, period. They are for prey and none delivers for spoil a spoil and none says restore. And that's that's us. As and when I say us, I mean us as a as a people. I mean we are prey. That's just all to it, like, and we keep looking for help. So we, we we doing all this marching, we we doing all this equal rights, and we we doing all these different things, but it continue the backfall, the backfire. And I got a whole video coming out. My next video is just gonna be on like just this month alone. Like it's it's about Black History, and I'm I'm letting you know right now that you know I'm not really an advocate for the whole Black History thing because history is history. And, it should just, uh, like, you know, our compliments should be chalked year-round and not pertain to a month. But it's just so much stuff that happened in this month alone that I got to do a whole video on it. It just let you, it's just like, should be a slap in your face. Like, if this is supposed to be your month and, and you just pay attention to everything that happened this month alone, it's crazy. And, you know, but as, as a people, you know, we rob and spoil. Like, all right, let's go to... uh Jeremiah eleven eleven. All right, Jeremiah eleven eleven. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, and they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me. I will not listen to them. You know, that's my most, most high saying. He, he hear you crying, but he ain't listening. Cause guess what? We we gotta pay. You know what I'm saying? We gotta pay. You know, for for our forefathers, and we gotta pay for the way we live it. You know, we want us to deliver us. We want him to deliver us out of every, any situation we get in, but we ain't doing what he, we want him to do. That's like a one in the relationship. And don't nobody want a one in the relationship. And don't nobody want to keep helping you get out of jams. And the minute you get out of the jam, you go back to doing what you was wanting to do or doing what you was doing before. That's it's not, it, it just don't work like that with, with nobody. Right? You know what I'm saying? So he, he hear you crying, but you know what I'm saying? He, he ain't answering. And that's just all to it. It's just be, because, you know, the way we've been living and the things that we've been doing. All right, now I'm, I'm going to read just one scripture, you know, because I, like I said, I'm trying to keep this at a time limit, but you know, I'm going to read one read scripture out of Revelations, uh, you know, about the people that's, that's, that's over there right now. So let's read Revelations 3, 8, and 9. All right, I'm going to read, you know, 
uh, 8 and 9. Uh, Revelations 3. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For you have a little strength, and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. I mean, this this clear as day. You know what I'm saying? Because who do you think he's talking about? You know, he's talking about the people over there right now. They're the only people right now that's recognized as Jews. You know, they won't even recognize you as you know a uh, Hebrew Israelite, and let learn let you even claim that you Jewish. If, if you say, you can't even say that, you know what I'm saying? You got to pass test and they got to let you even become a, a Jew over there in Israel. You can't just pick up the faith and come over there. And, you know, you got to get invited in and they got to let you become one of them, you know? And, and which is crazy. It, we shouldn't be wanting to do nothing they're doing anyways because, I mean, when you read that Bible, it tell you it should be coming from us and we should be teaching them and they can't never teach us nothing because... It was given to us. But that just lets you know who he talking to. And which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. That's the most high. You know what I'm saying? Saying, you know, he loved us. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to pay for it in the end. And he said, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. That's that's what he think about them, like you know what I'm saying, and so that just that's just a little tidbit uh, about them over there. And again, like I said, when you, anytime you put ish into the end of a word, then you know that that ain't the real thing. But other than that, real motivation, you know, and I'm gonna end this. But I just want to let y'all know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, we the please oh like share comment. But like I said, you know, it is it, a secret because it was designed to be that way. But once you find out, you know that it's probably the the best kept secret, and you you feel like you solved one of the biggest mysteries ever. Like because a lot of people wonder and try to find out who the twelve tribes is, and it, it's right there in front of your face. It's right there in this book. It'll let you know. So. Uh, I got probably one more video to do and then I'm going to end the series and I'm going to let this one digest on y'all brain for about like a, a week and a half and, and then I'll be right back at it. Have a, have a good day. Real motivation.